How to prepare an omelette fit to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Hello, today I'm here to show you a step-by-step -step process on how to prepare an omelette to celebrate Patrick's Day. I'm Eileen, a 50 plus year old woman in a city and I always prepare delicious nutrient filled healthy food so i'm here to show you how i'm celebrating saint patrick's day today and i'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process but before that i would like to remind you that most of the foods that i prepare are geared towards the woman who is over 40 that's over the age of 40 because um what we find is that at this age, once we approach or are in, in our 40s, our bodies go through a number of changes and one of the changes includes a slowed metabolism. Being in my 50s, I would like to share what I am eating and how I find and prepare those foods. You know, the foods that I would have liked to eat when I was in my 40s, but it's not too late. Even if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, it's still, there's still a lot of time to make everything better because each day when we eat well, we eat a different type of food, means that we are enabling our bodies to stay fine, stay well, that we'll be able to age aggressively. So in today's uh, episode, I'll be sharing with you a step-by-step process so that um, at the end of it you sit at the dining table with your family with your close friends and join the Irish in celebrating St. Patrick's Day join the Irish to celebrate Paddy's Day what a way what a blessing you know that we are able to do this I prepare different types of uh, omelets including one that I call with an African twist. So welcome and follow me through all the steps. You'll enjoy it. It's yummy. It's tasty. And you get to enjoy in the celebration. So let's get started. Let me show you the ingredients and the steps come with me as I prepare. How are you celebrating St. Patrick's Day? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to the day when we honor Paddy's Day, St. Patrick's, by doing everything green. Yeah. So today I'm going to make um, an omelette, an egg omelette in honor of St. Patrick's Day. And to do that, I have my main ingredient, which is... Um, spinach so for the full green color i have spinach and um, i have my cucumber how i wish even the inside was green but we'll do with the outer green part i have my coriander so i'll be making full use of all this green and um, i have my ginger I'll use two or three of them so so that they all they don't spoil the green color. I have my regular vegetable oil. I have a leek which has uh, both green color and creamish color. I hope it will not spoil our green color in honor of St. Patrick's Day. And then I have moringa which is uh, green, so St. Patrick's green. And um, of course I have eggs because we are going to make a omelette. And to make it more yummy, to give it the type of taste that um, will pull everybody to the table as we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, I have long paper, which I'm going to grind here in my mortar and pestle. So to get on to the next stage, I'm going to start by preparing the onion because of course when we are frying something, we always prefer to start with an onion and oil. 
and then I'll also chop my ginger and then after that I'm going to grind all the greens together I'll actually blend not grind I'll blend all the greens together with the eggs and then once I'm done with that I'll take you to my stove so that we can prepare this yummy yummy omelette in celebration of St. Patrick's Day we have to celebrate Paddy's Day the right way the way the Irish do it okay now let's move on to the next stage Welcome to the last stage of my omelette preparation and that's an omelette in honor of St. Patrick's Day. So Paddy's Day and uh, we've already prepared everything, the onions, the bell pepper, cucumber, leeks, we've prepared our eggs with spinach. So I'm going to make four different types of um, omelettes for St. Paddy's Day and come along with me so that you see and learn about the different types. So what I have here is um, regular cooking oil, vegetable cooking oil. I've heat the pan to a good uh, level and you can try that if you're not so sure by just dropping one drop of your ingredients into the pan and um, the noise or the sh was quite sharp which means that the oil is well heated so i'm going to pour in my first Ooh. and then I would like it to cook well, take its time, so I'm going to lower the heat and cover the omelette just to give it a little bit um, of more time to, to cook. So while the first omelette is cooking, taking its time, I'm going to prepare ingredients or the mixture for the second batch or the second omelette. And uh, by the way, I mixed uh, four cups of uh, spinach and six eggs. So the mixture that I'm serving here is uh, from four cups of eggs and um, four cups of spinach and six eggs. Yeah, it got, um, I got quite an amount. So that's why I decided to make four instead of three. And you have to keep checking on your omelette, the one on the fire, so that it does not overcook or burn. Mm, did I add too much of the mixture? Looks like, but um, we are going to get it working.
like it needs more time before I try to turn it so I'm going to cover lower the fire and let it cook a little bit more let's do this together you and I and see what we harvest And for you, do you celebrate any of these uh, international or national festive seasons? You know, like St. Patrick's Day or Easter, Christmas, and then the different um, New Year celebrations. Like we have the Western New Year celebration on 1st of January, and then we have a week later we after new year we celebrate the orthodox new year christmas and then new year and later on in february we celebrate the chinese new year so do you celebrate do you observe any of those uh, festivals do you join the celebration do you prepare your own meals in celebration or do you attend festivals where the others are celebrating so you can comment below and uh, let the others know and while you go below to comment please hit the subscribe button so that um, you get notified every time I upload a video with a new recipe and also click on the like button because the more the clicks then the more the more people that will be shown the video and um, what we would like is for more people to get to learn how to prepare different recipes be it for St. Patrick's Day or any other day so please click the subscribe video and also like the video okay so I have flipped I have turned to the other side so that the other side can also cook I'm going to lower the heat and uh, cover we are on our journey of preparing omelette in honor of St. Patrick's Day St. Paddy's Day so I've heat the pan into hot like a hot pan now I'm adding vegetable oil that's what i'm going to use you can use vegetable oil you can decide to use um, olive oil or any other oil that you prefer using when you're frying your foods so i'll give the oil a few moments to also heat up And sometimes when I want to know if the oil is hot enough before I pour my ingredients, especially when I'm frying an egg or preparing omelette, I just drop one drop of my ingredients into the pan to see the reaction. And with that uh, seasoning, I know that the oil is hot enough, so now I can pour in my ingredients and in this case it's our St. Patrick's Day omelette. Okay. So I'm going to lower the heat and cover it so that um, it cooks well. It cooks slowly and while it's doing that i'm going to get my second batch of ingredients for the omelette and um, i'm not changing the ingredients much because uh, the main ingredient is um, what i blended which was um, six eggs four cups of uh, 
four cups of uh, spinach that's uh, vegetables i also added a little bit of cucumber and uh, coriander stems not really the stems but the harder part because i left the leaves to add on when i'm uh, uh, frying it here so i'm going to add the second one and i'll show you what we are going to do with it let's check on the one that we are cooking make sure that it does not burn part of it is sticking which means it has not cooked fully so I'll give it a few more minutes the one in the middle has so much ingredients so it needs more time to cook I just press it down a bit Cover it and let it simmer for another 1 to 1.5 minutes. In the meanwhile, I'm uh, preparing the second batch. So for the second one, I'm going to use the usual base, but then I'll add something. But before we get on to that, let's check and see what's going on here. And see if we can turn our omelette even though it looks quite cooked on one side but um, I need to turn it I divide it into two so that it's easier to turn. Okay, so it's changed color. I've learned something which I'm going to do with the next one. Later on I'll tell you what I learned and um, how I'm going to modify the next one so that um, because we are celebrating St. Paddy's and um, celebrating St. Patrick means green. For us to be able to retain our green color, I'll uh, show you what we are going to do. So I'm going to cover this one so that the other side also cooks. So for, for the next set of uh, omelette, I'm going to add some onions. So... We are going to prepare the regular omelette only that um, using the um, Patrick's Day flavors and mixture. Okay, we need to lower the fire. We don't want the onion to burn. I'll cover it for 
a moment and to give me time to prepare what I'm going to add. So what I have here is my St. Paddy's main ingredient. That's the spinach and the egg. And then I've added a few leeks and, uh, and cucumber. Yeah. So this is still going to be our St. Paddy's omelette, but uh, with some new ingredients. So we don't want our onion to burn. Okay, now that all those ingredients are in, I'm going to cover and I've lowered the heat to half and we'll let it cook. Keep checking on your omelette, keep checking on it to see how it's uh, cooking and uh, wow, yeah, I can see mine is cooking quite well but uh, it still needs a lot of time as you can see the top has not um, cooked fully so we'll cover it i've put it on low fire and let it continue to cook and while it's cooking i'm going to prepare the mixture for the next uh, omelette and this one i'm going to change the ingredients slightly so yeah don't go away so that we can see the different types of um, omelets and colors that we can make from that one base and the one base is um, the eggs mixed with the uh, spinach some coriander and um, a little bit of salt so yeah, let's continue. Let's wait for this one. Give it time because we would like it to cook slowly, mm, brown, not really browning because now we have our green color. Gr Today we can call it, let it green, you know, by letting it cook on low fire. So, yeah. I like the way this um, omelette has turned out because for this one, as you can see, it's fully cooked. When I press the top, it's not uh, breaking up. And um, when I check the bottom, it's uh, as you can see, it's uh, fully cooked. So the bottom and the top are fully cooked. I did not want to turn it because remember we started with an onion so we have a base that I did not want to disturb that's why I had to cover the omelette and let it cook on slow fire which it has done it's now fully cooked I'm going to give it one more minute and then serve it and get on to the next one so while i'm waiting for that one minute i'm uh, getting ready the next ingredients for the one that we are going to cook and uh, remember we are making slight changes by adding or removing an ingredient from our saint patrick's day omelette and uh, 
for this specific one i'm going to add uh, black pepper and um, cinnamon so i ground cinnamon and black pepper together which we are going to add on to our mixture soon i'm going to show you what else we need to we are going to add so the mixture is ready now i'm going to sub oh i like this like this so what are we going to call this omelette that we've not turned but um it's fully cooked it's ready to be served what are we going to call it give it a name other than saint patrick's day omelette give it another name what are your thoughts on our saint paddy's omelette the one that we just made i've served it what are your thoughts as we wait for the pan to heat for the next one so stay tuned as i'm going to make a a few alterations to the main ingredient we are still using the main base which is the egg mixed with spinach and some coriander and some black pepper and a little bit of salt but i'm going to add one or two more ingredients so stay tuned so our pan has heated quite well let's test it and see not so much but uh, it's getting there so for this next uh, omelette what i'm going to do remember in the previous one i prepared the onion and then mixed or added cucumber and the leeks to the mixture before i made the omelette so for the next one i'm going to add most of the ingredients into the mixture and then pour them into the hot pan with oil so for this one i'm going to add a little bit of the onion the way we do the regular omelette so i'm adding cucumber i'm adding a little bit of the leeks and i'm adding a little bit of the bell peppers so introducing a totally new color let's see how it goes different cut. just to confirm i'll drop one drop of my mixture to see how it will sizzle okay that's so yeah let's add the next one and see what comes out So from experience from the previous ones, I know I need to spread it thin. That's why I'm leveling it up. We need to spread it thin so that it cooks all the way to the, to the top. And this is one reason why I like the kitchen in that um, so long as you maintain safety, you can do a lot of experiments in the kitchen and learn from them 
almost immediately for example i learned that um, i need to pour in a thin spread of the mixture for it to cook all the way to the top and i've also lowered the fire the heat so that's something else that i learned after preparing the first one because the first one the crust cooked very fast before the top one which forced me to turn it over so yeah that's what i mean by doing experiments in the kitchen sometimes if one method does not work as well as you wanted it to work it's okay it's okay the next one you do something a little bit different and so long as you keep on learning you know you like this one or you like all of them it's okay it's okay the only thing that you have to be watchful about is to make sure it's to maintain safety because you're using fire in the kitchen you need to be safe and you need everybody else to be safe and the best way to do that is to learn about fire management you know if you are heating oil normally i try not to move very far away from um, the the oil because sometimes you might be like oh i'll just take a minute let me go to the sink and wash dishes or clean dishes or load the dishwasher while the oil gets hot don't do that i don't do that because i know you can get to the sink you wash one dish and you are like oh i can wash a second one and before you know it you know our minds drift off you don't want a different sound from your cooking stove from your cook stove to call your attention and because it will be calling you to let you know that the oil is too hot and the pan is burning you don't want that to happen so that's why normally when i'm cooking yes i do different experiments like we are doing today making different types of omelets in celebration of saint patrick's day but um I don't move away, I don't wander away from the fire. Yeah, so that's my only advice when you're cooking. Stay by, watch over your food so it does not burn and uh, you'll enjoy it. Same way, I'm just going to flip it open and I can see it's cooking quite well. So I'll cover it and let it continue to cook because we want it to cook that's why i lowered the fire we want it to cook all the way from the bottom upwards yep as always don't forget to check on your omelet or whichever food that you're cooking yeah as you can see it looks wow i love the blend of colors and remember for this one we added some other extra ingredients which was uh, red bell peppers we added an onion cucumber and uh, leeks onto our mixture that's our mixture of uh, spinach and uh, eggs so could that be the reason why we have this nice greenish creamish color and uh, I can tell that our omelet is cooking quite well. I lowered the fire so that it cooks all the way from the bottom up. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that from here, but um, it's cooking quite well without sticking to the bottom of the pan. In that uh, we are able to lift it up, up, up. So it's cooking quite well. I'll cover it and um, give it a few more one to one and a half minutes. Because, um, yeah, I can tell we are getting there. So by lowering the fire and letting it cook, it's to enable the whole omelette to cook from the crust to to the top without having to flip it around 
so it's like we are steaming the whole omelet so that it all cooks up and while i'm waiting for that i'm uh, preparing the mixture for the next one yes we are almost done i think one or two more and we'll be done so i'm preparing the mixture while watching the one on the fire that it does not burn now we are ready to serve we are ready to serve our omelet and for this one i'm going to serve it into a different container into a plate of its own because what i would like to do is that um, when i serve the meal when i set it as a table i would like to tell the celebrants that we have different types of uh, omelets so that they can taste and let me know which one uh, should be used the next time when we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So this one, I'm going to serve it into a different uh, plate. While we wait for my pan to heat up for the next uh, omelette, I'm going to show you the one that um, we just made and I said I'll uh, serve it into a different plate so that um, I can let the people who will be eating know the difference. Uh, because uh, remember I've been changing the main ingredients but not the base so for this one it cooked quite well and this is the one where we mixed the we added the bell peppers the, the onions leeks and cucumber into the mixture not into the pan but um, into our mixture before we prepared the omelet so i'm going to label it that way and see how it came out it's all fully cooked so yeah i think my pan is ready let's move on to the next um, omelet omelet we are going to prepare the usual traditional omelet but of course still using our base that's uh, in celebration of St. Patrick's Day so I'm going to add the onion, the bell pepper, cucumber and leaf, the oil done a little bit. Yeah so I'm going to fry our mixture before we add the egg. I've lowered the oil to minimum. And I think I'll add a little bit of oil. Maybe what I added was too little. That's why it fizzled so loudly when I added the ingredients. the same way that we prepare the usual omelet where we do the base and then we add our eggs. I'm going to cover this one for a moment. Maybe 40 seconds to one minute so that um, they become tender before I add our next uh, mixture which is the usual blend of uh, eggs and uh, spinach so actually if you've noticed the difference between the one that i'm making now and the one that i served is that for this one we are preparing the extra ingredients on the pan before we add okay it's warning me that it's uh, getting hot afraid it advanced but uh, it still looks okay yeah what i was saying is that the difference between the one i'm making now and the one that i just served is that um, for the one that i just served i 
mixed all these um, extra ingredients in here into the mixture but for this one I'm going to cook them in the pan the way we do the regular omelet and then after that I'll add the egg and spinach they are well cooked so I'll increase the heat a bit and let's add our main ingredients in celebration of St. Patrick's Day. I underestimated the amount so I'll add a little bit more. adding to cover the, the base completely before I cover the pan and let it cook so what I'm left with now in the blender is for one more omelette and stay tuned stay on to see what we are going to make out of this so I'll cover and let it cook lower the heat so that it cooks well all the way from the bottom to the top let's check on our omelet you have to keep on checking on it to see how it's cooking to make sure it's not burnt or to make sure the fire is not too low the heat is not too low and um, yeah see it's taking a shape and it's cooking quite well from bottom upwards because um, as you can tell when I press it it's not um, like breaking up because uh, it's cooking well it's cooking well from the bottom upwards and um, while it's doing that I'm going to cover it for one more minute while it's doing that I'm going to mix our last um, batch for omelette and it's our last one in that now the blender container is empty I need to count and see how many omelettes I've made from um, six cups of uh, spinach and uh, four eggs yeah I'll let you know in a moment so let me cover it because um, it cooks well on low fire when it's covered otherwise if you leave it open then all the steam will escape and that means that your omelet will start uh, burning and we don't want a burnt omelet so if you cover you lower the, the heat it cooks quite uh, well so yeah as you can see we've uh, made a lot of uh, nutrition filled food which is the objective of my channel you know to share with the women who are over 40 not only the women but any other person who would like to eat a balanced diet for their age so for me being in my 50s i'm doing this for the women who are over 40 you could be in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and all the way up. But if you, you are looking out to eat well, eat healthy food, foods that um, are diverse to help you stay healthy today and in the years to come, then what I encourage you to do is to start by preparing a meal plan which I consider to be the basis for being able to eat well. And if you would like to learn how to prepare a meal plan, I'm going to link uh, an episode that I developed on preparing a meal plan. And also, if you go to my website, wegrowideas.net, then you will be able to download a copy of my step-by-step -step guide to preparing a meal plan and I say a meal plan is very 
important because uh, it's uh, as you go from stage one, stage two, stage three, that's where you do an analysis of your nutritional needs because um, once we hit age 40, we don't want to be eating food just to get um, satisfied. We want to eat food to meet um, or to provide for us the nutrients that we need to stay healthy today and in the years to come. So that's why for me a meal plan is very critical because once you have a meal plan the way I do, then uh, buying your ingredients, shopping for your ingredients or deciding on what to eat becomes uh, very easy because after you develop the meal plan, you'll develop um, a weekly menu or even a monthly menu and it's from your menu or a list of foods that you'll be eating for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner and for your various um, snacks. So from that list of the foods then you can develop your shopping list so that um, whenever you are ready to go shopping you are not just going to the market or to the grocery store to walk around and pick any food items but you go with intention you have a shopping list you go there you look for the type of food because on your shopping list you would have indicated if you're going to buy which foods you're going to look for organic which foods you're going to buy fresh which ones you're going to buy from the freezer and you are able to do all this because um, you have a meal plan so if you are a woman in your 40s or over 40 please develop a meal plan so that um, cooking does not appear or sound like a, a chore instead cooking will be something that you delight in doing something that you like to do yeah so as you can see our omelette is fully cooked in that when i lift it up it's not um, breaking which means that both the top and the bottom are fully cooked so Yes, you can see it's uh, fully cooked. I lift it up. It's not breaking and I'm going to serve this and um, label it because um, I would like my visitors to comment about the different types of omelets. Remember we are doing by interchanging the ingredients that uh, we are using. Yeah, so let me serve this and we get on to the next one okay we are on the last uh, batch of our omelette and um, if you've been following from the beginning i've changed the additional ingredients like for every omelette that i've made and um one two I've made four different types of uh, omelette for omelettes for St. Patrick's Day and uh, the main ingredient has remained the same that's um, the mixture of uh, raw eggs and um, spinach and a little bit of coriander and black pepper. So what we are going to do next for this uh, last one, I'm going to be a little bit more innovative by like Africanizing the St. Patrick's Day omelette. So stay tuned as we do this. I've already heated my pan with the uh, oil. So next I'm adding the, in the main ingredient, which is uh, egg and um, mixed up with spinach this is the last one so i hope it fits in uh, the pan and i'm squeezing out everything i don't like uh, throwing away food so especially yummy food you know when you know the ingredients you don't want to lose 
any of that so we have that I'm going to cover it and let it cook for two to three minutes and then after that I'll show you what we are going to add so cover lower the heat a little bit so that uh, it cooks uh, slowly it takes time because what we would like is for the crust to cook well while also the top cooking well and that's why I cover the pan so that um, the food the heat is retained within and the food does not burn so yeah let's give it a minute to two minutes it starts to harden after that I'll show you what we are going to add giving the St. Patrick's Day omelette an African twist and stay tuned I'm going to show you what we are going to add the last one we don't want to be disappointed it's cooking well but it looks like the heat is too much so I'm reducing to below low because there is the function for low I've taken it closer to off so that um, our omelette cooks slowly and it cooks well because what we want is that um, once we sit at the table to celebrate Paddy's Day we want to celebrate with food that not only tastes yummy but food that looks yummy because as always human beings we first eat with our eyes before we taste the food so yeah that's why i'm making sure that um, the food does not uh, burn you too need to do that whenever you cook so as you can see yeah i now know it's cooked or it's cooking well not fully cooked but um, it's cooking well because um, when I touch it the top is not breaking then that way you know that uh, your omelette is cooking well so we are now moving on to the fun part let me just uh, move it and see how well it's cooking yeah it's uh, cooking quite well it can fun if we wanted to turn it but um, we are not going to do that instead I'm going to show you what we are going to add as you can see it's uh, cooking well okay now moving to the new pan part I have this uh, mixed one dish food that I prepared last night we call this um, it's a Kenyan dish that has got many names depending on which side of the country you come from. If you go to central Kenya, it's called uh, Gideri. Even though this one is missing sweet potatoes, there's they add sweet potatoes as well. If you go to Nyanza and western Kenya, it's in, in Nyanza it will be called uh, Nyoyo. And then if you move more west, uh, it will be called Maengera. So it's got different names and if you're in the city or at school, you call it mixture because um, when I was in boarding school, this was a regular meal and I still love it to date. You know, so many decades have passed, but I love this meal. So I prepared it last night. These are some of the leftovers. I kept the rest in the freezer. And I thought, why not Africanize, you know, the meal that I'll be preparing for St. Paddy's Day. So what I'm going to do is adding a thin layer of, um, it's a mixture of uh, maize or corn. A mixture of uh, four different types of beans so I have uh, black beans I have uh, kidney beans I have chickpeas and um, I have groundnuts yeah I remember I cooked and then 
later on i boiled groundnuts and added them in yeah so i have red kidney beans black beans chickpeas a maize and groundnuts yeah so this is a new style of doing St. Paddy's Day omelette by Africanizing it and I decided to give it an African twist because um, growing up we did not know much about um, St. Patrick's uh, Day but we knew about the Irish people it was the time you know when the Irish people were in the news very often and later on I learned about uh, St. Patrick's Day and started observing it later on you're going to see my gear but um, for now let's see how this goes so I'll cover it still on low fire let the St. Patrick's Day omelette with an African twist heat up and um, cook and then after two minutes to two and a half we are going to open and see what we have so keep on keep on watching don't go away as always keep on checking on your food on your omelette and it's one of the safety practices that we have in the kitchen keep on checking if you have the heat on in the kitchen and you're cooking always keep on checking to see how your food is cooking and also to be sure that um, you are still safe in your kitchen you don't want to open and then find that your food overcooked it burnt and all that you are opening for is smoke we don't want to get there so keep checking and uh, from this i can tell that the nyoyo is heating up but um, i'll give it more time because i would like to have it bubbling so i'll cover it for another two to three minutes before i add my last ingredient i'll be showing you in a moment what's here and as always keep on checking on your food so that it does not surprise you surprise you the wrong way so oh i can see it's um, cooking quite well i can say so what we are going to do i'll just scoop a very small amount even though I can tell that um, the nyoyo has uh, heated up it's cooked quite well I'm going to taste just to be sure because I got it out of the fridge it really needs and oh <laughs> it's burning me <laughs> I underestimated how hot the food is because <laughs> I just pushed the spoon into my mouth and um, <laughs> you know those days when you put hot food in your mouth and you're like oh it's burning me but um, you don't want to remove it because uh, it's yummy it's yummy food that's um, what I got into. So I'm going to add our very last ingredient. And um, remember I told you I removed the coriander leaves and only blended in the, the stock. So yeah, let's do this. What are we going to call this um, type of uh, egg? omelette with nyoyo and um, a touch of coriander at the top what should we call it looks so beautiful so comment below and let me know the type of name you would give this new recipe of ours i'm going to cover it for another one to two minutes because um would like the coriander to release its um, aroma 
I guess you know the type of aroma that it releases and especially when it's cooked added to food at the end of the cooking and then let to simmer in with the food yeah so we are giving it one to two minutes on low heat and then i'm going to try my best to describe the the aroma and the taste okay welcome to our celebration of saint patrick's day you can see the table is set i've set our table and um, waiting waiting for the people who are going to celebrate with us tell me what's not green here you know from the different types of omelets here there another omelet another africanized omelet and we have including the mittens to bring the omelet to the table it's all green our heart as we get to the celebration to get to the main dance but before i invite my visitors to come over i need to taste the omelette saint patrick's omelette and see if uh, paddy would like would love this omelette yeah so let's celebrate so welcome back we are now getting to the the fun part what we've been waiting for and um, if you allow me i'm going to taste the food on your behalf and let you know how it tastes but um, as you can see i did not let you down when it comes to being irish everything you know is uh, irish you can see i prepared quite uh, well so now i'm going to taste this is uh, among the first omelets that I prepared for St. Patrick's Day to celebrate with um, the rest of the Irish community. Today we are all Irish. So this is the first one which is um, has the main ingredient and the main ingredient is spinach and, um, and eggs and of course um, some onions and oil I could eat this all day I could eat this all day but um, let me taste everything because we have one two three four and I got the bottom one, so that's five different types of uh, our omelette. So now I'm going to serve the next one. I think this is the one which I made um, the omelette where I mixed the, the ingredients with the main base. So what I did was um, I took some of the chopped onions, cucumber, leeks, and um, yeah, and made uh, mixed it into the main mixture and prepared this uh, omelette. You know what? I said that I would eat. The first one all day I'm changing my mind I would eat this second one all day mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like it that I can taste or chew on the cucumber chew on the leeks so now I'm going to serve the third type of omelette that I made for Paddy's Day and this is the one I prepared by frying the onions, adding the cucumber, adding the red pepper which you can see here 
adding the cucumber, adding the leeks onto the pan before I poured in the main ingredient. And our main ing ingredient is um, the eggs and uh, spinach. So let me taste this and I'll let you know. real omelette mm? I don't know for you what you call real omelette but um, wow they are all nice they are all yummy each has got its own uh, thing of taste you know not making it better than the other but different mm. I'm loving this Okay, before I eat everything, let me serve the Irish omelette which I Africanized. And um, I told you I Africanized it by adding some African ingredients. That's the mixture of um, maize, beans, and everything in between. The yo. And then at the top, I garnished it with our coriander, the coriander leaves. So yeah, the Irish have taken their meal to Africa or Africa has come to the Irish people. So let's taste this and see. It's a totally new recipe, new blend, new taste. Oh my goodness, mm? Mm? hands down, mm? wow, wow, imagine Africa and the Irish, Irish blended together, your choice on what you get, your choice on what you get, comment below and um, before you even comment, please give me a like. Like this video so that um, the computers can suggest it to more people. We need to get as many people to come and watch this and see how I am celebrating St. Paddy's Day with my visitors. And also give me a like. Did I not do a good job? Yes. So. Mm. This one? Mm. Mm. Unique, unique taste of um, omelette with nyoyo. Mm. 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 So, how many marks are you going to give me? What are your thoughts? Would you like to taste this just to get to know what I'm talking about when I say they are yummy? No need to worry if you'll get it right or wrong. Just watch the video again. Follow each of the steps. If you decide to do everything the way I did it, follow the steps and do it. But if you would like to prepare only one of these different types of omelets then watch the video stop at that particular one and um, narrow down go deep and prepare that and enjoy it on this St. Patrick's Day so that we all get to celebrate Paddy's Day yes the Irish know how to celebrate so 
Let's join them in the celebration.